This is the second uh, lecture for the History of World Christian Movements, Unit 1, and we're going to take a look at uh, the third chapter of Pearson and his uh, concepts of the two structures of the church expanding into the world. These two structures are known as modality and sodality, and they refer to the structure of the work of the church. And so let's take a look at structure one. Structure one is um, the work of the local church as a sending agency. We see in um, Acts chapter 13, and in this chapter we have um, the story, the recollection of the church in Syrian Antioch sending Barnabas and, uh, and Paul on a mission in this local congregation of individuals and they were said that there were teachers and prophets among them and while they were gathering together in prayer and fasting and when worshiping the Lord the Holy Spirit came and called them to set apart Barnabas and as he was known at the time Saul or Paul for the work to which I have called them and so after they fasted and prayed they placed their hands upon them and sent them off now these two, even though they were sent by the local church, scripture says that they were sent on their way by the Holy Spirit. And it was the church acting in response to the Holy Spirit that then sent them on their way. And so they um, then began to um, extend this initial method of, of going into existing synagogues, existing gatherings of those who feared God, existing gatherings of the Jewish people who who were inheritors of the promise of God, who were inheritors of the promise of the Messiah that was going to come. And so they expanded the church through these god fears. And so we have that structure at work. When we get beyond Acts chapter 13 um, into other parts of the book of Acts, we see Paul traveling with a band of people, you know, uh, Silas, or, you know, at the beginning, Barnabas and, and John Mark, and then later with Silas and, and with Luke and with others. And these missionary bands would travel and, and would um, go out into uh, areas where the, the gospel message had not yet been communicated. Now, they would still maybe go into a, an area and seek out the god fears. They would seek out the, the Jew, Jewish people and, and enter into the synagogues. And because of Paul's status as a rabbi, was able then to be able to teach and teach from Scripture. And in teaching of the Scriptures, would make connections of, from, of the, the Hebrew Scriptures to the story of um, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we had these uh, committed, experienced workers you know, that were making this additional commitment beyond their membership in a local church. And so we have these individuals who, who sensed a calling to move beyond, to go further than. It wasn't just that they were now Christians, so because they were Christians they were doing this. They were, as Paul Pearson uh, says, a second decision people. They were making a further attempt to, to work with, um, to follow the Holy Spirit into um, areas of ministry that were beyond their locality. And they were not dependent on the sending church. They did not receive... Funding. They were, as the scripture tells us, tent, uh, well, in Paul's case, a tent maker. He would patch tents and, and fix the tents, particularly of those in the marketplaces of the, the um, communities that they would enter into. I mean, a place where people went on a daily basis to buy goods, either to sell goods or to buy them. And, and, and so people were there daily from all around, not only the, the city or town, but in the, from the countryside. And so it was an ideal location to make a connection within the community. In fact, we know that that's how Paul uh, came across Lydia, a seller of purple, in the marketplace in Philippi. And so we see this ongoing strategy where they were entering into different communities and changing um, those strategies based on the demands of the local context. And so we see this, this um, development within the expansion of the church as depicted in the New Testament, primarily the book of Acts. And we usually um, tend to look at the structure of the church and being going in like different directions, where we have the church or this institution becoming so grounded that anything else is considered kind of opposite. To, to leave and to go outward is, is to do something completely different, to go in the opposite direction. Well, when, when in reality we see the church or inst the institution um, uh, symbolically and uh, symbiotically related to the mission of the church. 
and that these two structures are not diametrically opposed, but are very much um, unified and feed one another. The modality or the church, um, the church structure, the institutional structure, feeding the sodality or the mission structure. And um, so we have these, these two corresponding structures within the, within the church that need to happen. Both need to happen for the church to make an impact in the world. Let's take a look at modality, the church structure. Um, you know, we kind of associate this with the church building, either the local church or a denominational office. Uh, we see this depicted um, uh, primarily in Europe and Western Christendom with the uh, the height and breadth and and uh, and and solidified uh, solidified structure of the the cathedrals. And these are places where people gather for worship. It's the, the place where the, the disciples come to be shaped and deformed. In fact, you know, some of the first universities were situated around monastery schools where people would send their children to be further educated and nurtured. And so this is a place where uh, there's an organized structure, just like the church in Syria and Antioch. They had a gathering of those who were recognized as teachers and prophets, those who were recognized as those who could make decisions. It was uh, relied on the structure uh, in the early days, not so much, but later on into um, the Middle Ages and beyond uh, into more contemporary times. Um, this institutional uh, organization um, allowed for um, decisions to, to be made and possibly, we would like to think in, in more efficient ways, but maybe less efficient most of the time. It was also um, characterized by, the, the modality is characterized by being centered. Um, where where there is a, a and we have a, um, a functional center where um, that, that then springs forth it's almost like we were talking about in the last session um, centripetal there was like this center from, from which things expand outwardly but what's also interesting is that this structure is also characterized by having solid boundaries there's a, a clear uh, distinction between those who are inside and those who are outside it's also usually depicted as the sending agency that um, those um, who uh, go out into ministry. There is an inside where we are prepared, structured, nurtured, as well as this to go outward into the field, into the unknown, into the wilderness, into the highways and byways, into the, um, the, the busy streets of the city. And so this, this um, modality is this centered sending agency. And it's also characterized by going on then to maturity and um, a continual, but there's this need to, that we, we can't just stay in this modality. We have to correspond to the sodality or the mission structure. The sodality is characterized by the calling of disciples. You know, Jesus going out into the countryside. He didn't call his disciples from within the synagogue, but at their places of work. Peter fishing uh, along the side of the sea and, and um, uh, you know, Nathan under the, uh, Nathaniel under the, the tree and, and Zacchaeus on the edge of the crowd calling his disciples where they were in their daily lives. Also characterized by walking in prayer, we see Jesus not revealing himself, not so much um, you know, within the town of Jerusalem, but on the way with the two disciples on the way to Emmaus. You know, we see this structure also characterized by being more missional, being sent outward, also uh, in terms of evangelizing and, and sharing the good news with those who may not yet have heard. Uh, there's a sense of flexibility in the structure. It's not so much centered, but rather it uh, exists on the periphery, on the outward edge. And there's not a real clear boundary of who's inside or who's outside when you're working with this group of people. You know, sometimes they look much like the people they're trying to reach. Um, sometimes they might even talk like them, even speak the same language as them. But they're they're um, communicating the gospel, trying to bridge uh, the the gospel with this community that they're in. There's a, a definite sense of being sent and of going outward. And so this, this continual movement uh, characterizes the sodality or the mission structure. I'd like you to take, to take a few minutes and to uh, think about these um, two structures, the modality and the sodality. And you know, I want you to look um, at today's chapter, chapter three by Pearson, and find examples of modality and find some examples of sodality. You may also have to think of examples from modern day. What are some modern day examples of the modality? Uh, one example for um, you know me might be the World Mission Department for the Church of the Nazarene that sent me. Um, a sodality uh, would, in another way, be the um, 
the small mission office uh, for uh, Wycliffe SIL that we were friends uh, with many of the workers in Baden. It wasn't necessarily a the sending agency. They weren't sending people from that agency, but they were, had, were sent to that location and then working from that base to uh, translate works and reach um, uh, difficult to, to reach language groups with the scripture message. And so think through some examples of modality and sodality before continuing on.